Okay, this is the abbreviated version of my series and parallel compare contrast. So if we look at the two circuits here, one thing that's not really clear is that these two circuits are sort of like mirror images of each other in some ways. And let's look at how that is. If we look at the series circuit, all the components in a series circuit share the same current. So if you look at what's going on with the current there, the current through the battery is the same current that flows through R1 and the same current that flows through R2. So all those currents are identical. And if we added more components, those components would share that current also. If we look at parallel circuits, we notice that those components all share the same voltage. So the voltage across the power supply is the same as the voltage across R1 which is the same as the voltage across R2, and it would be the same for any other branches that we added to that circuit. For series circuits, the voltages across the load add up to the supply voltage. So our voltage across R1 and R2 add up to equal the voltage from our battery. In a parallel circuit, the currents through R1 and R2 add up to equal the current from the battery. Now in a series circuit, every time we add another component, we add another node to the circuit. And we'll talk later about what nodes are. But in a parallel circuit, whenever we add a new component in parallel, we add a new branch so we have these two entities called nodes and branches that we'll talk about later. If we're solving a series circuit, a very helpful law, if you want to call it that, is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the sum of the voltages in a series circuit is zero, but really for simple circuits, that's the same as saying that the voltage across R1 and R2 equal the power supply voltage. For parallel circuits, we have what we call Kirchhoff's current law. And Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the sum of the currents in the branches is zero, but it's just another way of saying that the sum of the currents in all the branches equals the supply current. Okay, some examples of series circuits are Christmas tree lights. We all know how aggravating Christmas tree lights can be. One bulb blows out and they all go out. And that's because they all share the same current. So if you interrupt that current, you interrupt the current to all the other components. Another example of a series circuit would be a voltage divider. We use voltage dividers a lot in electronics. And so we'll talk later about how voltage dividers are useful for things like power supplies and other functions. Another use for series circuits is current limiting for things like LEDs and other components. For parallel circuits, examples of parallel circuits are home wiring. All the devices in your home are wired in parallel. And it's a good thing. It's that way because that means all the components get, all the appliances that you plug in get the same voltage, 120 volts. And no matter which appliances you have plugged in, everything continues to work. Another use for parallel circuits is current dividers, or shunts. And these are just things that we can add to circuits to help us measure the currents through those circuits. Um, another use for parallel circuits would be battery charging. If you have a source to charge batteries, you can add as many batteries as you want to that in parallel to charge all those batteries. And it's important to keep in mind that when we're talking about series and parallel circuits, we're not limited to talking about just the loads or just the resistances being in series or parallel. We can talk about voltage sources being in series and parallel also. And we'll do that later. Hope this was helpful. Let me know.